We are Cindy and Eddie. And this is Squeeze the Day. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another vlog. Today we are going to Teotihuacan. And we're taking you along with us. We feel very fortunate to be able to go visit the Teotihuacan pyramids just outside of Mexico City. We've been wanting to do this for a while. Today is our opportunity. In order to do this, we signed up for a tour. Our guide was kind enough to pick us up at the Airbnb. It's really awesome having someone so knowledgeable about the pyramids taking us there. Another one of the tourist attractions are the massive amounts of hot air balloons that you can see floating around right now. They're very popular, especially this time of year when the weather is so nice. We arrived early enough to have some decent parking. Take note of how many people are here, or rather how few people are here right now. And a great big shout out and thank you to our tour guide, Natalia, for all the information and helping us appreciate the Teotihuacan culture and civilization so much. There were other tour guides also walking around helping other tours, but we had the best. Now we're gonna go and enjoy our tour. By the way, in case anybody didn't know, hot air balloons are so much better in the morning because the hot air rises above the cool morning air, making it more effective. Teotihuacan was the biggest city of its time on this continent. It was a multicultural city with lots of different groups of people living within the border. Today, we'll be visiting the religious and political areas. As we're walking towards the moon pyramid, eventually the mountain behind it is going to disappear. It was actually designed to do that. And they put the pyramid of the moon over there because we're trying to recreate the mountain. The pyramid of the moon is recreating the mountain that it's behind. It's called Cerro Gordo. While you walk from south to north, eventually you will not see the mountain anymore and you will only see the pyramid. So the mountain is going to disappear and the pyramid will become the sacred mountain. That's like an optical effect that the Teotihuacans made, we will see the mountain disappear. As you can see behind me, the mountain that was on the other side of this pyramid is now completely gone. And if we turn around to look at the Sun Pyramid from the Moon Pyramid location, we can see something interesting. The Sun Pyramid is recreating the mountain in the back. You can see it has the same shape, the pyramid and the mountain, because it's a recreation. You can see the way they mirror each other. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting that the Teotihuacan civilization not only built these pyramids to replace the mountains as you get closer to them, but they also built them in the shape and style of the mountains as if they are showing their appreciation of the landscape surrounding them. And yet there's still so much more for us to learn about this amazing civilization and their relationship with the natural environment surrounding them. You want to get here early in the morning for multiple reasons. One, that's when the hot air balloons start coming up. That's also before the crowds start getting here. As you can see, it does get busier throughout the day. That's kind of expected whenever you're into a, a popular area like this. Definitely worth coming out to check out, but make sure you get here early. At this spot, you can really see the comparison of a sun pyramid with the mountain. Right, here we can clap and it sounds like weird. The ceremonies used to happen here, so people used to bring drums and flutes and trumpets, different music maybe. It was everything to create this audio effect, so the ceremony here like different. There were several stray dogs that were in the area as well, which were really cute and didn't bother any of the tourists, so we decided to put some b-roll of them in the video. We hope you enjoy them as much as we did. It looks like this is a temple for the feather serpent god right next to the stairs that we're taking up to the highest available point in the Teotihuacan area. From up here, you can see something pretty interesting. 
everything in Teotihuacan is following the cardinal points. Every single construction will be going north to south, east to west. They used to believe that it was the center of the universe. The one that it's in southeast is related to the serpents. The one that it's northeast is the cats like jaguars or pumas. In this one, we are the eagles and birds. And over there, there is the clan related to the colors. Everything is like east to west, north to south. We are done with the Pyramid of the Moon. We're going to head over to the Pyramid of the Sun next. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of the Pyramid of the Moon. Next, we're going to go take a look at the Pyramid of the Sun. The parade ground here is a lot smaller than the one at the Pyramid of the Moon. However, this is the largest pyramid in Mexico and also has a tunnel running through the center of it that archaeologists believe was used for water as part of religious ceremonies. As you can see from the video, this is a very big pyramid. There's so much to learn about this area that it was nice to have somebody to explain a lot of the stuff as we were walking around instead of having to stop and read all the signs along the way. The archaeologists that are studying the Teotihuacan culture believe that housing in this area was actually set up more like apartments where groups of natives would live together and use their sleeping areas only for sleeping and repairing clothes or other minor at home stuff. They weren't used like we use our houses today, it was more of a community than a home. There are two theories, people that say it's only administrative, like for storage and for doing some handcrafts and also like for people that used to work in the government. But since they have found also some domestical pottery, that's also another theory that was houses for the elite groups. temples but the important thing about this part is to show you how they used to build on the top of the construction so here we have like one construction and then another one and you can see like everything was like like i said like onions like something at the center and then instead of destroying and building something new they just build in the top of the things so here we will see like a temple but it's like surrounded with walls that used to be like other temples and you can go like inside to see some stairs that used to be outside but now they are inside because they built in the top of the, of the temples. We've been doing a lot of walking so we found this great area to take a quick break in before we get back out to explore some more of these ruins. It's also believed that this was more than just a residential area. They believe a part of this was a market where they would exchange goods for goods. It's believed that they didn't have money in the same type of sense that we have money. So they couldn't purchase something with paper or gold but rather they would exchange this type of good for a similar amount of value on this other type of goods. Mm -hmm. 
Earlier we showed you a temple for the feather serpent. Now we're going to show you the pyramid for the feathered serpent. This is the temple of the feathered serpent. And we're actually going to go on top of it and look around that one a little bit more. We'll show you what that looks like. Also, another theory, it's the thing that I like the most, that this is a temple dedicated to time and calendars. And they say that because the other character, the, the one with the two circles and squares, it could be a representation of another goddess called Sipakli, or maybe the headdress of Sipakli, and that goddess, she's related with alligators and farms and things like that, but also with time. So she's like the first day in the calendar and she brings the time in her body. And so in the interpretation of this pyramid is that Quetzal God, the brother of serpent god, bring, coming from the god's plane, bringing Zipatli with her, with him. So he's bringing time and calendars to, to the human world. So that's the other explanation. And also in the Aztecs calendar, that they are very related with the Teotihuacans, with religion. The day one of the month one of the year one, it's the day Zipatli. That so that's the other interpretation that uh, the feather serpent is it, bringing time and calendar. The reality of visiting a popular tourist destination is you're going to run into tourists. And if you're going to have tourists, that means you're also going to have people trying to sell stuff to tourists, like these whistles you keep hearing. This gentleman right here makes all of these by hand. The earlier you get here, the less people there are. So you want to get here as early as possible. That is not the end of the video just yet. We've got more to see. After visiting the pyramids, we went to go get a quick bite to eat before we continued on our day. As part of the tour, we were taken to this restaurant, which was really good and a reasonable price. Now we're going to go get some souvenirs. Look at these dogs. These dogs are hairless dogs that are part of the culture in the area. They collect the rocks in this area and shape them to make souvenirs for tourists to purchase. The only one that's natural to the area is the obsidian, but it's a beautiful rock and they have a couple different varieties of it. They have a black obsidian and a golden obsidian, and when highly polished, the golden obsidian shimmers with a golden hue in the sunlight. You can see that right there. Take a look at this other neat trick. That is the sun that you can see through the obsidian. The plant produce the juice that is very sweet, honey water. We turn to famous pulque. That is a drink that contains vitamins, proteins, and 4% of alcohol. It's like a beer. The plant produce two liters of juice for day for six months approx. After the plant dies. They also separate the outer layer of leaf to use for paper, and then they pull the center of it out to create a needle and thread, which is amazing in creating different products like this sponge here. We were absolutely loving walking around looking at these beautiful souvenirs. Tell us what you think of these souvenirs. Some of them are pretty amazing in our opinion. Unfortunately, we cannot take them with us because we're traveling full time. If we took anything heavy, like any of these, our bags would weigh a ton before we're done. Let us know in the comments. Do you think we should start a Patreon? Maybe send some of these out to you guys? We'd love to know. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed that video and we really appreciate you coming along on our adventures with us. We'll see you in our next one. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so that you can continue to follow along with us as we continue on this adventure. And as always, squeeze the day and be well.